my fellow Israelites, I'm glad to see you made it. For we have gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. Today, my friends, we're going to jump right into Proverbs chapters 3, 4, and possibly some 5 today. Uh, it's always a good reminder to remind us, and maybe today's message is for myself. And, you know, after I make this message, I'll go back and preach to myself, you know. Uh, we all come to a place in our life where, where we struggle. And, you know, we could think that just because we've turned our life to Jesus and we're a Christian, we, we will never struggle again, but that's not the case. You know, you could go 10, 20 years and, and not be struggling, and then all of a sudden a great storm or struggle comes upon your life, whether it be testing or, or trials, and, and then we begin to question and wonder, what is God's plan for my life? Or your life? What is God's plan for our lives? You know, what what is God's will? And so we get distracted, you know. I know for me in, in my life, you know, I've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ for the past five years. And if I completely leaned on, on my own understanding, you know, I, I would be lost. Be, because everything God says about His love and His mercy and His grace and how all those things are available for us. And we're like, yeah, I, I want that. And, and then He says, well, come and follow me. And, and then we begin to follow Him. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves in a giant spiritual warfare. We find ourselves in warfare out against the world. You know, there's times in, in my life where it feels like I'm completely possessed by a foreign spirit, a, a different spirit, something completely different and foreign from what I am or who I am. And it's from the abundance of what's in our heart flows out the truth. And for me, I, I flow out Jesus all day long, the gospel, the Bible, and it stresses my family out. And in that, you know, there's kind of a, a negative feeling or, or vibe, and then we begin to question. Did God call me to preach and teach His gospel, His good news, His word? And, and so there's all these obstacles and things come along to take it away. You know, you go to church in different churches, and, and you're like, hey, I want to be a part of your group. And, and then, then we don't want nothing to do with you. And, and a lot of it, it all come from judging my appearance, whether or not I had a beard or I had the right clothing. We see it today, everybody's so full of judgment, and we're always judging the, the very first appearance, as, as though we were going for a job interview. Yet, care, love, compassion, those things are slowly being removed. You know, it makes me wonder, you know, you see, we're going to follow Jesus, I'm going to preach the gospel, and I sure thought somebody out in the world, whether it be a local church or someone out there, would say, you know, what you're doing, your enthusiasm, your zeal, your love for God is commendable. Come and join our group. Come and help us do what we're doing. We're doing this and that, and we could sure use somebody who's full of compassion, zeal, love for God. And then, and then, and it's silence. Nobody help you. Nobody. And then you begin to wonder, did God call me to do these things? Because if God called you to do something, if he called you and asked you to do something, would God then come and, and be a deterrent to you? Like would he put up all these briars and thorns and thistles? Is it God doing those things? trying to prevent me from doing what he asked me to do. God asked me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, tell the world the good news. Jesus loves them, hears their prayers, and is coming soon. Yet nobody wants to hear it, nobody wants to listen to it. And most people who are churches and church elders in a community of member church people or religious people, you know, it's all about them. 
It's all about them. You know, it's not about you. It's not about building you up. Don't want to know you personally. Don't care for you. Don't want to hear about your problems. And yet in all of it, it just seems like not only the Christians, but the entire world begins to despise you and hate you and reject you. And you're like, what's going on, God? And it's not God. It's evidence. Satan is the prince of this world. He hates God. He hates God. You know you're on the right path when, when everything that, that could go wrong goes wrong. And it's not God hindering you. But it's the devil. Said spiritual warfare. It's that little voice in your head, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, if, if the church won't accept you, how could God ask you to do this, you know? You see these things and wonder, you know, how did... Saints and apostles of the past deal with it, you know. Paul says he, he was dressed in rags. He was homeless. And he had nothing. Jesus says to the rich man, you know, there was an, an American. If you think about what a rich man is, a person with many possessions, a rich man said, how do I, Jesus, a rich man, enter into the kingdom of heaven? He says, follow the Ten Commandments. Right there, you know, do not murder. Honor your mother and your father. Do not lie. Do not bear false witness against your neighbors. Do not slander people you do not know. Do these things. Do not commit adultery. And, and, and it will go well with you. Eternal life is yours. The rich man said, wow, I've done all of that every day since the day of my youth. Right? And because Jesus loved that man, because he loved that man, he said, well, there's one more thing you must do. Sell everything you have, give it to the poor, and follow me. And the man goes away sad and upset, angry, because he had many possessions. Think about it in our lives, how hard do we work at, at our works, our jobs, or our careers to obtain these many positions. I worked all my life following all these rules to be a good person. I've worked all my life to obtain all these things. And now to give it away, everything I've worked so hard to achieve, just give it away and follow you, a, a person who has no home, dressed in rags, living by faith? How could I do that? How could we do that? The Bible is clear that we are to live our lives exactly the way Jesus lived his life. He's the living example of what a sinless person lived their life like. This is, this is what God says. I, I love Jesus with all my heart, mind, and soul. And in him there is no sin. And because there was no sin in Jesus, God rose him back to life. So this is the one. This is the one in whom I love. The one who has no sin. And, and yet, does the Pope live his life just like Jesus did? Does your pastor live his life just like Jesus did. How about Pumpkinhead Trump? Does the President of the United States live his life just like Jesus did? All these people claim to know Jesus. But, but which of one of them is living their life just like Jesus did? Jesus says, this is the one who has eternal life in him. The one who obeys me. The one who obeys me.
The one who gives up all their possessions, things, and stuff, gives it to the poor, and follows him. The one who hears his words and then puts them into practice. That's the one who loves me. That's the one who has eternal life. And those who hate him, they are the ones who refuse to obey him. Refuse to live their lives likened into Jesus Christ in the same way he did. Same way he did. You know, here in the, in the United States of America, it, it is definitely the Democratic and Republican Party, the most evil people, Sodom and Gomorrah, it's the most evil people on earth, gathering together to conspire against Christians. And, and you got to understand, it's against Christians because it's they who want to condemn you. Condemn you. How do they condemn you? Bow down to our mark, our image, our statue, our flag, the United States of Washington, America. Bow down to, to that. Now, do not bow down to the image of Jesus Christ. Do not bow down to the likeness of Jesus Christ, but bow down to our flag. Right? You, you want to piss somebody off, you know, just disrespect their flag because then you're disrespecting their morals and you're disrespecting everything they stand for. It's just, they, they hold a blind eye to justice. The mark. The dollar bill. Satan is a dollar bill. And everybody who loves Satan with all their heart, mind, soul, everyone who loves the dollar bill with all their heart, mind, and soul, is cursed. And I'm not cursing you. I'm telling you, God said you're cursed. Cursed. Be better you had never been born. Cursed. And there's many people across America saying, I wish I'd never been born. And, and you know who's leading the way in suicide? The veterans. The army. The soldiers who came to the realization that they weren't protecting the Constitution. Instead, they were protecting the rights of their slave owners. And their slaves' owners have all bowed down to Satan. The dollar bill. The dollar bill. Image, mark, and the name. Washington. Washington. Washington wants to rule the entire earth and, and they want to rule over you, over us. Do anything you want in life, but don't be like Jesus. Jesus didn't have a job. How dare you? Stop working. One of the fights I've had is I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and yet not a Christian, not a person, not no one says, you know, what you're doing is so good. Let me give you a gift to ensure, like a tip, like you would tip your waitress, like, you know, you do this and say, what you're doing is, is so powerful, it's good. We'd like to see you each and every day. You know, I'm not the one who decided to make food cost money. Satan did, and I live in Satan's world, and, and the evidence Satan hates Jesus is anytime anybody works for God, dedicates, devotes their life with great compassion to the Word of God, to the preaching of Jesus Christ, they are unworthy of food. Don't bow down to my image, you get no food. Unworthy of food, unworthy of money. And it's not that I worship Satan, or I worship the dollar, or I love the dollar, or have any concern for the dollar. The dollar won't come to my hand because Satan controls the dollar, and Satan hates Jesus. 
Give up on your eternal life. Love money. Love the powers and the riches of this world. I know what? Teachings and instructions of demons and devils. This is how they do it. I know what? Fast from food. They'll tell you to fast from certain foods, certain drinks, certain things. And then remind you that, hey, so Joe Bro here on my uh, cell phone sent me a text message and wanted to tell everybody and who is Joe Blow's name. Don't worry about his name. Don't worry about that. But he experienced a miracle. He fasted from food for five days and experienced a miracle. Praise God. Everybody stand up. Praise God. What was the miracle, Jim? He got a job. He got a job. And we call that a miracle. That lazy bum got a job. And, and we're praising God in church. That what a miracle. And and all of them all together go right back. Well, if God would bless you with the job for sacrificing eating food for three days, just how much more would God bless you? If you sacrifice the full 10% of the tithes, and they do it all across America, we, we can't even have a, a service, a preaching and the teachings of Jesus Christ, who, who goes three years without talking about money. And, and yet you go to church Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, begging for money. And miracles are all wrapped around money. And yet money and the love of money is the root of evil. And yet it's a big circle of evil, wickedness, and sin. And I could tell you about all the times I went to the nursing homes and go and visit with elderly people. <clears throat> people suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's and I have no memory and have no knowledge that they're even here. Families and children just abandon them like a dead dog dying at the at the kennel. You go and, and then they say, well, stop coming here because if you don't have family members here, we, we don't appreciate you coming in. Okay. Go to food banks, working at the food bank. Handing out money to people. Praying for people, praying for God's blessings. And then they, hey, we don't want you to come here no more. We don't need your help no more. Okay. And, but in all of it, I gotta ask myself, is it me? Is it me trying to be better than you? Or them? Is it my own pride that I just won't admit that we have all gone wrong? Because this is the what I've seen in my life. Nobody is like Jesus. And if there's one thing you don't want to do, is become like Jesus. Nobody does right. Nobody does good. No one. Not one. So like God rose Jesus Christ back to life. This one dead. Yet no others have. No others are. We're all about the, the forgiveness. Forgive me, Father, but so I may live in greed. But, but nobody would admit that, that it's your greed that, that has made me subject. I am subject to your greed. I am a slave to your greed, slave to your money, slave to your image, slave to your name, your pride, slave. What choice do I have but to accept your mastery over my slavery? Your greed rejects God. There's many people who spend their lives playing video games and different things. And they'll do those things compassionately 
and become world champions at playing video games and playing football and playing baseball and entertaining other people. Entertaining them. And they are rewarded fully every day. But people who care, people who have compassion, people who want to be a part of a better world, that they are becoming the scum of the earth. Because we're always taking away their fun. Because their fun comes from abusing us. Greed. Greed. The President of the United States says, hey, I'm controller over the army, I'm the chief of the army, and we have one job. Protect the Constitution. Protect your right to the freedom of religion. All. Oh. Religion is a set of beliefs where a mass of people have come to organize together to say these are the morals by which we live by. The United States of America has created its own religion through the Democratic Party. If you don't bow down to us, you will be cut off. Not protecting the Constitution, your right to have the freedom of religion, your right to piss on our flag. That's what it means. I am the President of the United States and I protect your right to piss on the flag. Because the flag is nothing. In God we trust. You can trust in the God in whom you love. Money. Fat people say, yeah. Man, I'll give you money, but all I can give you is $40 because all I got is $43, and I want you to know. If I gave you money, I'd give you 90%.